Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm a finance consultant based in London. I'm also a blogger, YouTuber, basically a content creator. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking. Please subscribe and click the like button. Not your first time. Welcome back. I'm going to be talking about my trip to Morocco. Instead of just putting out a blog there where you might not even understand where I was, why I chose where I went, I thought I would do talking. Hopefully this will be helpful if you're planning on going to Morocco. This is a very good video to watch. Share with your friends and you might inspire them to travel to Morocco. Um, at first I was like, okay, yeah, we're going to Marrakesh and I thought, three days would be okay i knew what the budget was i'm a nigerian with a nigerian passport so most of the places i travel to I, I need a visa i have a blog post on the countries that you don't need a visa for as a nigerian there are 44 of them guys so i'm going to put the link to it so you can check uh, the visa for morocco was pretty straightforward the list of things they needed the regular bank statement the insurance and proof of work or what you're doing obviously your visa your passport your return ticket to be honest guys wherever you're going as a nigerian you need a return ticket even the countries that are visa free because that just shows them that come i'm not going to sleep in your country that's just the minimal to be honest to do as a nigerian with a nigerian passport traveling the embassy was in paddington we booked the first appointment which was like nine o'clock or nine thirty for single entry you pay 20 pounds for multiple entry you pay 26 pounds they couldn't give us a multi-entry because it was our first time applying so we obviously kept the six pounds gave them 20 pounds guys i did not spend 20 minutes at the moroccan embassy in paddington so that was just swift beautiful we left in seven days time visa came so i started researching so i now basically watch a video that said top 10 things to do in morocco i thought i was watching marrakesh so while i was reading number 10 number nine number eight number then i got number one i said marrakesh i'm like ah, i thought i was watching for marrakesh but trust me guys that video helped me most of the hard trips like the budget is just there and then i'm the one that sort of does the planning nitty gritty booking of everything i went to instagram i was like i needed to talk to someone you know you go to the country like just looking at the map trying to figure out what to do what not to do when you have someone planning your trip is always amazing i used hashtag to find a guide in marrakesh now went back to research i saw that with marrakesh you could actually do everything in marrakesh in a day so that three days what are we going to be doing and also trying to add one of that cities using that other first video i mistakenly watched i was watching the video i was writing things about each city first was the former capital so i was like okay first sounds nice rabat is a present capital rabat sounds nice chef sean i don't know how to pronounce that the blue city oh my god that was like one of the first inspirations and <laughs> reasons i needed to go Morocco. only for me to find out it wasn't even in marrakesh I was like okay I added Shevchon to the list and then I added Casablanca as well I looked at all the hours between each city and they sort of arrange it I was uncomfortable. I went back on YouTube, watched a video, and this guy recommended um, some travel guide for Marrakesh. While I was in, I just realized that come, babe, three days will not do it. So I just went back. He agreed for us to do six days. Now I had something good to work with. I contacted the travel agency. They got back to me like uh, 24 hours, and I told him what I wanted. I told him to sit down there and visit. And guys, these people drew a lovely PDF for me on how we're going to cover everywhere. Meanwhile, the guy on Instagram was already helping me find a van. You know, the PDF was just beautiful. I know, how much is this? This guy said 42,000 dirhams. So you guys, the dirhams, you just divide it by 10, you get euro. So obviously, you're doing like maybe 13 point something and you get pounds. I was like, okay, this is too expensive. And then he got back to me 24 hours later and said, okay, 23,000. I was like, what kind of companies are? How do you tell someone 42? And then the person just says, oh, this is expensive. Why you change it to 23. Are you like trying to rip me off? I was like, anyway, thank you. I didn't get back to him again. So I used this video of Heldy. Went back to the guy on Instagram, told him about the plan and everything. And then he was still trying to go a van for like 5,000 dirham. And I didn't, I wasn't just sure of the whole package. I didn't want to be driving and thinking of any wrong sense. So I just went back to my husband. I was like, okay, so what's important to you in this trip? And he was like, I just want to go to the test. I was like, I just I'm not even put this out in my plan. I went on trip advisor guys. I was like, okay, even if it's a camel, I'll just find I saw one in Marrakesh, camel trekking ride, da 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 da. They said we we'll go somewhere and ride the camel for like 30 minutes like this. My husband will be fine with this. On um, second thought, I just started reading other people's whatever on trip advice and reviewing like a particular company. So I went and emailed them and then the next day they added me on WhatsApp. This guy spent like two hours talking to me. I told my plans, everything I was like, ah, okay. That's your Sahara, that's what you're gonna start with. They shared you a lovely plan. Oh my god. You guys I was so impressed. In the end, it was gonna be six fifty euro per person, which is one thousand three hundred euro, which is obviously thirteen thousand. So you can imagine that is a minus ten of even what the guy thought he was the deal he was doing. Me. And when I started reading reviews of the other company, they like they don't even take it personal you know how someone will take your trip personally like this other guy like showed me pictures showed me reviews like, you know when your instinct just go and you guys that's when people say when you think of something how you want something think of it your actions will be in that direction everything i thought of was everything these people were offering me the first thing is we're taking care of dinner breakfast and uh riyadh so it was just nice and that's how i found who i was i'm um, going with other things um to expect from morocco as you read from many um blogs you know the people a lot of them want to guide you they want to help you help you 
you but they always beg like even to the kids they're so disgusting like you walk with me like i made this for you give you for you know you know you want that tell them that i'm wondering and they will even tell you the price they want or the hair that they can just massage really on your hand i'm like ah oh, please we want money we want so they are kind of like that they're very very friendly <laughs> They're very very friendly and lonely to be honest most of the cities were very very nice well marrakesh they were a bit aggressive the first day we landed at the airport my experience at the airport was very annoying because the guy who looked at my passport and documents and everything i think he was just learning he kept asking his boss like different questions at some point he started even doing my visa like this like maybe he thought i used chalk to paint the visa or something it was really really annoying he asked me what i did for like 10 million times as one of the officers kept apologizing me that he's a new guy so he's just trying to make sure he gets everything right but that was it we drove to Oazaze. had a tea break somewhere stopped took some pictures drove 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 he was playing arabic music at some point he now started playing like english music which was good so enjoy the vlog of our first day you guys, please kill me now. <laughs> oh, my days! Can I give us peace? <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later. The words come from Roman country because if they were from stranger or something, they call it Berber. That's why they oh. call us Berber. The real name is Amazio. Oh. The Amazio it means the nobleman or the freeman. Casbah. it means the collect houses with towers in the corner. In the past, there is 45 families. Just four families. Another six go to the new identity and left this place just for bazaar. This is our paper flag. There is some meanings to this flag. That's the symbol, yeah? Yes, that's the symbol. And if you want to make it with your hand, it's like this. Yellow, it means the desert and Sahara and the sun. Green, it means the mountain and everything is green. Like trees, like grass, like everything is green. One, it means the sky and the water, it's blue. This red one, it means that man died for this country. Okay. With the red, it means blood. This is our country. Okay. Our language. Okay. Uh, the God, the country, and the king. Okay. For the moment. Morocco, yeah. Yes. This is a picture. You just paint it. You will see the magic of tea and sugar. Tea and sugar and sapphire. Yes. And now it's fixed by fire. What's in the oven? Uh, it's like caramel and you can smell Yeah, it tea. smells it smells good. Yeah. Eve, the yeah. wife of Adam, yeah. this is the symbol of it. Very very with it. They using some stuff like this, they put it here and here for woman. In the past, you can find the houses and the animal houses. Okay. And you will find too the rest places for the visitors. Someone comes to visit someone here. You have to stay here until that man comes for him. This is the rest Reception. <laughs> That's like a secret on the past. second day obviously woke up at Uazaze. The Sahara is really far from Marrakesh so it's not something you can just drive straight to. So the Uazaze just helped us see Atlas Mountains, see so many things and then the next day we're heading out. On our way to Sahara we stopped at Tengi, Todra, Goji, Efraud and then the Mezuka. I think Mezuka is the area where the Sahara Desert is. Mohammed parked the car. Bah, bah, you know, finally I was on top of a camel. It was a very nice ride, guys. You see, in the beginning, I was quite scared, but at some point I got really comfortable with the camel ride. I did videos. Enjoy the second day. Your fingers, you can wave and say hello, no, no. Let me see you go, 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 go,
on the CGD from classes. As we're ready for like 25 minutes. I'm now so comfortable. Only when we're climbing down, it's very steep one. And I'll grab this thing with all my power. In fact, my hands even start hurting me at some point. So I think once this is over, we just watch the sunset and go into our tents. I'm gonna show you guys what the luxury tents looks like. At least I'm sure we have our own bathroom, which is most important. Mazi for this. <laughs> it's the one giving me all the liver. Just look at it when I see him holding with two hands. I'll hold it four hands. <laughs> Now we're right into our tent. On the way to Fez, we pass through Ziz Valley, Middelt. Middelt is the place where they produce like so many apples and then Ifrain. Ifrain is what they call the Switzerland of Morocco because of the way the houses are built and the fact that expatriates are who the people that stay there. The driver just said it's better we do the rural palace that evening so that the next day we can just finish up everything we're doing and start heading to the fourth city. Enjoy our vlog on the way from Mezuga to Fez. So they woke up top at like to seven to come and see the sun. <laughs> A few moments later We had a new guy, Mustafa, who I guess he's well learned on like things about fairs. He talks a lot. I just saw a lot of people with mint leaves on their nose. I'm like, why do people carry mint leaves like that? When you go to the Tana district where they do the leather, the stench is so much. And when you come out, you have to like dilute your oxygen with the mint leaves. So, like, it wasn't even necessary. We went to so many mosques. As a non Muslim, we're not allowed to enter the mosque. So, I obviously, took pictures, put some money in the Thing and then yeah we continued our sightseeing. We're supposed to have lunch but we're really not hungry. I think we had eaten a lot of trash in the car and we drove all the way. It was about three hours. But you guys were in a four by four air condition, music, sleep. I was even editing pictures like so it was nice. It wasn't bad at all and it was relaxing. There's no looking at maps, no thinking what are we doing here? What are we doing there? Enjoy day four. In the new city it's referring to the new part which was formed generally in the 1912, 1913 because of the French or the Spanish uh, colonization. And the Medina here in Fez, it was found around the 8th century. And around 789, where Mule Idris is the father, he came to this area and he built a small village next to a, a river, we call it White Fez. And his son, who took over the, the rule at later, when his father died, he built another village on the other side of the river. So there is a small river, like running right now in the middle of uh, the Medina. Oh. did this gate right here on our left side. Marrakesh, you know, it was found in the 11th century by Al Moravid dynasty. You know, this is the old Medina, uh, which is like the oldest Medina here in uh, Morocco. But here it's very narrow, but you can see in this street, it's very small that you have to go and go down in order to get to the other side. Thank you. 
it's the only white mineral, so that's belonging to the Karawin or the Karawin University that is declared as the oldest university in the world. And it has like a unique style because it was formed by a woman that she was like a refugee from Karawan in Tunisia. And she was like daughter of a rich person that she used part of her money in order to build Karawin mosque and later it was developed to be the university exactly. In Morocco, I took a red and the green. A red set in Marrakech, as I said. So in Rabat, and the green set in the mountains, nine kilometers from Fez. As a holy person, you know, to be like this, it was yes. buried in this area and they built like a Muslim for himself, you know. The bread is baked, you know, and there is oven, so they have to make like fire. By the way, this building in front of us, it's the Najarin Museum. Uh, which was, was a conduct or a caravansary or a, a hostel. Chef Shaun or Chef Kaun is the place that is really blue. Everywhere is blue. So we stopped there, took pictures, got into the city, checked in. And then we went to find Aladdin restaurant. So you guys, if you're ever in Chef Chawan, go to Aladdin because you will see the whole of the city from the topmost floor. Back to our hotel and then watch that Chief Daddy movie. He slept off, woke up the next day. Enjoy the vlog. So we just checked in right now we're going to the apartments because the rooms are here but the apartments are somewhere else advice to come to this place called Aladdin it was hard to find because of all the turns and stuff but eventually found it and it's really worth it because the view is amazing I'm going to show you guys the views now and then I'm just to show you the food happy times, I'm really happy oh yeah, I got the hair now the next day, Mohammed came to meet us in the morning I really wanted to stay in white walked around, did pictures, did pictures and then left so we're heading now to Almighty Marrakesh while we were planning the whole trip they took off Rabat and Casablanca according to the tour guide Casablanca had just one mosque the mosque was gorgeous though I saw pictures that non-Muslims can enter but coming out of Casablanca it would have taken us another one to two hours but because we didn't spend so much time in Chef Chow, to be honest, Chef Chow was actually small I even wanted to stay two days in Chef Chow because I thought, ah, Blue City booked a hammam treatment at the linary i was just following recommendations i didn't even go look at the pictures for me to see to be it wasn't even looking that nice i was like please please, please. we can do the hammam when we get to marrakesh because our riyadh was really fabulous so we stopped at rabat to take pictures on our way to marrakesh which was really nice <laughs> A few moments later Once you got there, you just know the difference My car is just like Lagos I said, you know how you leave maybe Abuja or Calabar and then go to Lagos and everybody just mad. He was really impressed with my choice of that. We are do. I showed him everything. Though. Well, if the person was looking at you, blame me. <laughs> the next day, we had another guide. He came to meet us at 10 o'clock after breakfast. The guide just took us all around. We we're just walking. It's more of a walking thing. The walk was long. At some point, we are tired. He even wanted to just go back to the Riyadh <laughs> because he just liked the place. I was like, nah. It ended at Jardin. Majorelle, beautiful place, stunning with like flowers, so beautiful, lush. It was quite expensive to enter there, to be honest. They had a price for Moroccan citizens and international people, which was very annoying. But it was, it was worth it. Was well, I would like to say it was worth it. Not really. It was just beautiful, very, very nice. Took some pictures there. We bought some snacks. Enjoy the video. Good morning, lovely. Time for breakfast. That's if it's Elba. Okay. 
he has to find somebody who will replace him until he become like the king until his kids become uh, old, enough. old enough for to reign how many wives did he have the person that gave by her four wives did he give them all of them this type of palace no but normally one is made for this is the origin the rest they have them some rooms oh. he gave them some rooms and he has also 24 mistresses okay so where did they stay there is enough places it's a huge palace okay. so there is enough places where they are staying where they are cooking where they, they are having shower okay. what's his name again ahmed. sorry ahmed ben musa known shortly as Bahna. the jazzy okay bakbat yes. okay so badu is going to be for food the people at the riyadh helped us print our ticket so muhammad came early and took us to the airport and guys we boarded and flew down to london <laughs> basically it was an amazing trip I don't know what guys we bought internet that same day before we got to the hotel in Oasazet the whole of Morocco don't be looking for alcohol anyhow the only place you get alcohol is like some specified shops that sell it or this is like Carrefour which is like a shop right or West Food or something where they have a section where like they are so self-sufficient like everything they build it themselves they even use animal fossils to make like decorative things and uh, it's just amazing that I think they're most important import is actually we the tourists conclusively make sure you look at my blog because there are some things i might have forgotten i'm going to put every single detail on my blog contact me send me a comment you can send me an email you can send me a dm on instagram at metro gypsy if you have any questions there's going to be a video on the react we stayed the food we ate and what we wore I'll probably explain a bit more there but make sure you look at my blogs i'm going to put links to every blog that's connected to my morocco trip you need to go to morocco because i make it fantastic you can't go to morocco guys without going to the sahara click the subscribe button if you haven't and share this with your friends do have a good time and thank you for watching see you on the next episode Bye bye <music>